Welcome to the Virtual College Fair for all Virginia students, sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. A few housekeeping announcements before we get going here. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off. The panelists cannot see or hear you, so the only way you can ask questions is through the Q&A button. A important note, if your question is for a specific institution, make sure you note that in your question so they know to answer you. This is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to check out the full schedule, strivescan.com slash Virginia. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week. Again, the same website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. So if you need to circle back and get some information that's presented here and see it again, you can do that at that website. We are in session B1 on the left side of the screen, the 2 to 245 session, which you know that. And this is the order of our presentations this afternoon. So I've gotten all the housekeeping stuff out of the way, so I will get out of the way and turn it over to our first representative from Piedmont College. Hi, everyone. My name is Karis. I am from Piedmont College, and I am getting ready to share my screen with you and tell you a little bit about Piedmont. So, okay, so Piedmont, we are located in the Northeast Georgia mountains. So we are about an hour Northeast of Atlanta. You can see on the map that it is very easy to get to us. We were founded in 1897. So we've been doing this for a while. We have four schools um, that Piedmont is comprised of. One is the R.H. Daniel School of Nursing and Health Sciences. We are one of the top three nursing schools in the state of Georgia. Our Walker School of Business. We also have our School of Education and our School of Arts and Sciences. Between these four schools, we do have over 50 majors and multiple graduate programs. So we have 49 plus clubs and organizations on our campus, um, including Greek life. We are made up of between 1,200 and 1,300 students in undergrad, and then many more graduate students, both on campus and off campus. So we are NCAA Division Three. We have 21 different sports teams. We compete in the USA South Conference, one of the largest D3 conferences in the country. And we are very successful having won three out of the four last President's Cups. Our classes are small. That is what we're known for. 11 students to every faculty member. And our average class size is 12 to 13 students across campus. Freshman classes do range between 24 and 28 students. But those are good to go. So, um, Our exciting news coming up, Piedmont University, we are thrilled that this is happening. It's happening in 2021 because 2022 will be our 125th birthday. The schools that I mentioned on our previous slide will be coming colleges and we have multiple things happening on campus. As our president says, there is construction dirt in the air at all times here at Piedmont. We are about to break ground on a new residence hall. We have new athletic facilities coming and we are getting ready in the next, this month to open our um, newly renovated building for our school of education. We did open a brand new music conservatory last year that made us an all Steinway school. Our residential life on campus is very, very active. Over two thirds of our students do live on campus in one of our 10 residence halls. We have both suite style and apartment style housing. Freshmen will have a roommate. It keeps you from being isolated and helps your acclimation to college. So all of our rooms come with a twin bed or two, bed, two twin beds for freshmen, a full size refrigerator, microwave, um, obviously closet space and a desk area. We have more activities on campus than we have days in the school year. There is always something to do, whether you are doing the rock climbing club, we are close to many rock climbing areas here in Northeast Georgia mountains, um, the outdoor club, or you're taking part in the medieval and Renaissance society organization, student government and campus activities board are also very, very active on our campus. Freshmen receive a 19 mil week meal plan in our dining hall. So you can see these pictures of events around campus. That middle picture with the science equipment is from um, Physics Week, Math and Physics Week. Super popular week on campus. You never know what's going to be um, smoking or exploding at that point on the quad. You can see our theater performances. The bottom middle picture is Disaster Drill. It is put on by our School of Nursing, but it includes our theater department, mass communications department, and many other um, departments on campus. 
So admissions requirements, when I get to the important things real quick here for you. Um, our application can be found at piedmont.edu slash apply. That application is free. There is no application fee. You, um, we are looking for at least a 3.0 unweighted GPA. You can see our freshman average last year was a good bit higher than that. A thousand on the SAT and or a 20 on the ACT. We have gone test optional for fall 2021, but we are strongly encouraging students to send your test scores if you have them. They will not hurt you. They will only increase your um, merit-based scholarship offer if, if applicable. Merit-based scholarships are going to be determined by both the combination of your test scores and GPA, mainly hinging on GPA and only on GPA if you don't choose to send test scores. Nikki Blanchard is actually the admissions advisor for the Virginia area. She was not able to do this session, but she would be the one reaching out to you. And I am happy um, if you reach out. My information is going to be on the end of this slide. But I'm happy to forward Nikki's your information on to Nikki. Financial aid. 97% of our students do receive some kind of institutional aid. And last year, I believe it was 100% of our incoming freshmen received a merit-based scholarship. So like, you, like we mentioned before, based on GPA and test scores, we do accept any other federal and need-based aid or outside scholarships. Outside scholarships are really important for you to apply for as they go to almost any, they will apply to almost any school you do. Um, there are no athletic scholarships, but we do have scholarships through our fine arts and other departments. There are also scholarships for juniors and seniors once you get here. So know that. So last year, between you know, we gave over $12 million out in institutional aid. So that should give you some basis for what we offer. We encourage students to come visit us. We are doing personal campus tours. Um, you will be able to meet with financial aid, admissions, a professor in your area of interest, um, one of our student tour guides. It is a one-on-one -on -one experience, you and your family and one of our tour guides. So no worries if you will not be that you will not get as much information about Piedmont as you absolutely need. You can schedule a visit at piedmont.edu slash visit. We also have a remote tour options once a day. So if you can't get down to Georgia, that's a great way to see campus. One more thing, we do have our, our preview day. It is coming up, it is a virtual live event. It will be coming up on November 23rd. You can schedule that on our website as well. But that is all for me. Thank you very much. And I wanna remind everyone, if you have questions for our presenters, use the Q&A button to ask them. And if it's for a specific school, name that school in your question. Up next, let's hear from the representative from American University. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that you all are well. Uh, I'm Michelle Stinson. I'm an assistant director of admissions at American University. Um, and I'm just gonna give you a, a little bit of information. My territories are, um, Sorry, I'm just gonna get this set up. Okay, my territories are Virginia, West Virginia, and Washington, D.C. So I'll be the rep reading your applications if you apply, as well as um, the person who is gonna be your point of contact. So we're located in the upper Northwest area of Washington, D.C. And something cool about that is about four miles from the National Mall. And with that, the campus is very much so residential, but you have access to other areas um, in the DMV area. We really uh, want students to be able to get out and enjoy that. We offer a U-Pass for all of our students, which is an unlimited metro card um, for the bus, the shuttle, the train, things like that. We want you to be able to explore the area as well as utilize that for things like internships and whatnot. Um, so our student body, we have about 8,500 undergraduate students um, and our class sizes, the average class size is gonna be around 23. And the student to faculty campus wise uh, is, is 11 to 1, that ratio. Uh, so you're going to get the mixture of a, it's going to have the feel of a small liberal arts college as far as your class size is getting to really interact with your professors and knowing people on campus. Um, but also it's going to mix with a, the scholarly resources of a large research institution. Uh, so I think it's a good mixture in that it's a medium sized school, um, but with a lot of things uh, that are available to you. As far as diversity, about 32% of our student body identify as students of color and the representation is from all 50 states and 122 countries. Um, so as far as schools and colleges, when you apply to American University, you're applying to the school as a whole. You don't have to declare your major until the end of sophomore year. So uh, these six schools and colleges, if you decide to receive information, it's just going to be asking based off of what your interests are um, and what information will be sent to you. Is you don't have to know what you want to major in. And in fact, it's, it kind of works in your favor to kind of keep an open mind 
Um, students do double major often, and with that, you can double major between schools as well. So um, internships, about 91% of our students take part in at least one internship during their time at AU. Uh, you'll find a lot of students do two or three. Um, we want, we, uh, our career center hosts um, internship fairs multiple times during the year. This year, they just turned to doing it virtually. Um, and uh, with that, the schedule is really in support of you being able to um, take part in internships. So the class schedule will be Monday, Thursday, and Tuesday, Friday, with that Wednesday set aside uh, for, for internships that students might be taking. With study abroad, about 70% of our student body takes part in study abroad. So you can go for an alternate break, such as spring break, winter, or summer break, or you can go for a full semester or a full year. Although we are not uh, studying abroad this semester, students are still applying to be able to study abroad in the spring with the knowledge that things could change and that they might not be able to uh, we just want to make sure we're able to keep in mind the safety of our students um, while they're on campus but especially um, off campus as well just with outbreaks and how each country responds to those uh, COVID-19 updates of uh, outbreaks so with the admissions process we have two early decision application deadlines and then a regular decision deadline the only difference between early decision one and early decision two is that this the date um, some students might realize that AU is at the top of their list later and so that just offers them that additional opportunity um, and and with this we I 100% recommend all students to uh, sign up to to submit financial aid documents we require both the free application for federal student aid and the CSS profile which is on the college board website um, so to submit and you also are to submit those at the same time that you're submitting your application because if admitted we want to be able to provide you with your award letter um, and just list all those things out there for you as well um, for november 15th you'll hear back by uh, over four fire before new year's for the january 15th early decision two deadline you'll hear back fire before valentine's day february 14th and the regular decision deadline you'll you'll hear back by or before april 1st um, so these are the things that we require um, i do suggest making sure that so we have the 75 dollars application fee or fee waiver. So reach out to your college counselors, your high school counselors, just to see if you qualify, even if you don't think you're gonna get a fee waiver, just ask to make sure, just to cut down on costs and things like that. Um, we've been test optional for about 11 years. Um, and with that, if you apply test optional, you'll still be considered for merit scholarships and, and other special academic programs as well. So it's really up to you, but we wanna make sure that you know that that's an option available to you. Um, and with the high school transcript, we're gonna be looking at the changes that have occurred over the past spring and into the fall as far as grade changes and um, how your school, uh, the scale for how they look at your grades, if it's pass fail, things like that. So we're gonna adjust as far as those things are concerned too. Um, and here are our special academic programs. Just to note, these are all due by or before um, December 15th as a priority deadline. The regular deadline for these are January 15th, but these are separate applications and we 100% recommend turning them in by December the 15th, just in case you're interested in those. Um, and the three-year college program is kind of just what it sounds like, but you can also, for any of these, you can, if, if not admitted to these special academic programs, you can still be admitted to the school, which is also why the application process, uh, the applications are separate. So here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out. Um, we do a lot of uh, virtual events, um, so if you want to do an Eagle engagement, which is a group interview, anything like that, feel free to email me and I can send you the links for that, as well as if you're interested in exploring more of just ways in order to get uh, just to know more about American University. Thank you all. Thank you very much. And again, I will remind everyone if you have questions to make sure that you ask them using the Q&A button. And if it's for a specific school, name the school in your question. Up next, let's hear from Eastern Mennonite University. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Suri Mendoza. I'm a senior admissions counselor here at EMU, and I'll be talking a little bit more about our university. So EMU is located in Harrisonburg, Virginia, in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley. We are around two hours from DC and Richmond, as well as Roanoke, and a short drive to Charlottesville. So there's always something to do and drive to on the weekends. Like I said, we are in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley, which puts us in close proximity to all of the following national forests, national parks, and the Shenandoah River. So in addition to this, we also offer ski and snowboarding classes. 
Our student body is around 1,000 undergraduate students. However, we do have approximately 1,600 students enrolled in all of our EMU programs. This includes our graduate, undergraduate, and seminary level uh, classes. You can see that our average test scores are up here on the upper left-hand corner. Um, we have, um, it is important to note that this year we are test optional and our average GPA this um, past year was 3.6. For students who achieve higher than this, um, have the op um, opportunity to qualify for our honors program. And for those of you who follow below, that is perfectly fine. Just know that this is an average. EMU just recently underwent a outstanding renovation in our Cedar Science Center. This includes high-tech technology labs, such as engineering, nursing labs, in addition to our anatomy and physiology lab that you see in the upper left-hand corner. Um, I invite you to visit campus so you can explore the Science Center for yourself. So we offer over 55 programs of study. We also have several pre-professional health, graduate, and seminary programs, as I mentioned earlier. You can see our popular programs of study in the left-hand corner with our top ones being nursing, biology, business admin, computer science, and engineering, but we also have exceptional classes in all of our other programs as well. So it's not limited to just those five. This, um, we are also excited to announce that this past year, 98% of our job seeking graduates were employed within graduation. So this is really important to know when you're looking at different colleges and universities in your area. I do want to put this up here. It is a lot of different information. So depending on what your major is in, whether that's pre-med or pre-professional health sciences, nursing or business, you can see the outstanding academic st statistics that we have at EMU, and you can um, look back at this to review more details. The reason for our success is our small intentional class sizes. Our student to faculty ratio is 10 to 1, and our median class size is 15, and sometimes it's even smaller depending on the cohort that you're in. If you do have additional questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A for us to answer. So, one way to experience your academics and all of the things that you do is through internships and education practicums. This provides learning opportunities for experiential learning in addition to building your resume for job applications in your senior year. I did mention that our top program is our nursing major. Nursing students complete clinical placements in multiple hospital and patient care settings. And so I invite you to come take a tour of our nursing labs and meet with our nursing professors to get some more information. Another way to explore internship opportunities is through our Washington Community Scholar Center. We offer DC group living in the suburbs of DC. We also have many internship placements and we have a full comprehensive list, um, each counselor. So feel free to reach out to me or one of our other counselors for more information on this. You can also take additional classes at DC universities and experience the nation's capital. In addition, we do have a cross-cultural program that's included in our curriculum. So there are opportunities that include a semester abroad, a summer trip, and a summer or semester in DC. Our students have visited over 80 different locations and you can see our top programs in front of you um, on the screen. So in terms of campus events, there's always something happening during the weekday, during the weekends, during fall and spring breaks. Um, and those are a few listed on here, but I enjoy, again, I invite you to campus so that you can experience this for yourself. We also have campus recreations for students to come and hang out at. They have access to a full fitness center, intramural sports, and a climbing wall. And in addition to those, we do have over 30 clubs and organizations. You can see a full list in front of you. Um, however, this is not limited. We have a streamlined process for any student to create a club that they're specifically interested in. We also, several, we also offer several student services, and one that I like to highlight is our Academic Success Center. This provides free peer tutoring for all students of any major. EMU is affiliated with the Mennonite Church USA, grounded in enduring values of Christian discipleship, community, and service. You can see that there's not just one EMU student. We have over 50 countries, 30 states, and over 50 denominations represented on campus. We're also a part of the NCAA Division III ODAP conference, which means we don't offer athletic scholarships, but we do offer academic scholarships. 
And if you're not a student, we, the fan experience is just as great. Every student gets into every single game for free. In addition, this past year, over 99% of our students receive financial aid. Our average assistance package is $37,000. And again, our academic scholarships range from $10,000 to $21,500. And all you need to do is submit your high school transcript and application. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you very much. Leave that up there for a couple seconds so people can see it, either take a screenshot or uh, write down the info really quickly. And again, it's a good reminder that this session is being recorded. So within about a week, you'll have access to this at the same website you signed up and you can get all of this great information again if you need it. Continue. Next up, we will hear from Christopher Newport University. share my screen real quick. All right, well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kim McDaniel. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission at Christopher Newport University. Um, thank you for joining us. Just to give you kind of a little brief synopsis of CNU, we are located in Newport News, Virginia. We have about 5,000 students total, and we're not looking to get any bigger than that because of the opportunities it allows you to have as a student. Um, majority of our students are undergrad. We do have four graduate level programs on campus. Um, so I'd say probably about 200 students on campus are within those graduate programs. Our average class size is about 19 to 24 students with majority of our classes being 19 or fewer. So you really are getting that kind of one-on-one -on -one personal connection with your professor and they get to know who you are. Um, kind of going into academics of everything, we offer 90 different areas of study. So it's majors, minors, concentrations, and then um, we also have some track programs like our pre-med, pre-health advising track, as well as pre-law. Um, with that, you do get a core advisor for your first two years who kind of helps keep you updated and on top of everything, making sure you're taking the classes that you need in order to be successful. And you don't actually declare your major until after your first semester of your sophomore year. So you really have a year and a half to take a wide variety of courses and figure out, okay, is this what I want to study? Or maybe there's something completely different that you want to look going into. After that, you will get a major advisor for your final two years on campus. And they just really help to make sure that you're staying on track with everything. They're great for helping you find grad schools, um, writing you a letter of recommendations, helping with internships, and maybe even finding some jobs while you're on campus. Um, as great as academics are, that's not really what always makes your college experience, and we understand that. So we also have some really great athletic programs. We're also in the NCAA Division III, but we are part of the Capital Athletic Conference um, for all of our sports except for football. With that one, we're in the New Jersey Athletic Conference. Um, if Athletics aren't really your thing or you're not looking for that kind of division three level. We do offer club and intramural level sports as well. Um, we actually have over 200 different clubs and organizations that you could be a part of. Um, and that includes the athletic, includes academic clubs, it includes religious affiliated clubs on campus. Um, it is Greek life as well. We're about 25 to 30% as far as Greek life is concerned. Really kind of depends on the semester and the time of year. And we also have random fun clubs on campus. So we have a chicken nuggets club where students get together and they eat different type of chicken nuggets. Um, we have Knights of the Forest. So if you've ever wanted to hit somebody with a lightsaber, come on down. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you could be involved with on campus. And if we don't have something you're looking for, you're highly encouraged to create that. We are a residential campus, and this just kind of goes with the community atmosphere that we have here. Um, so being residential, that really means when you come in starting freshman year, you're going to live on campus for your first three years. So freshman, sophomore, junior year. And I will tell you, our residence halls are absolutely amazing. Um, we have been ranked by Princeton Review for having dorms like palaces consistently over the past few years. So definitely come visit us so that way you can actually see the residence halls yourselves. Um, so as great as campus life is, let's really kind of talk about this application process. Every year we get about 8,000 different applications for a freshman class of 1250. Um, we're not looking to increase that because it allows us to have those smaller class sizes. There's two different ways to apply. We're on the Common Application and we're also on Coalition. Uh, you kind of choose whichever application you like better um, and apply that way. You only have to choose one. We have three different application plans. So we have Early Decision, Early Action, and Regular Decision. Early decision is binding, so if we 
say yes when you've applied during that time period, you have just committed yourself to coming and you have to pull any of your applications to other colleges away. Um, it's great for some students, not the best for all. And so we also offer early action where you still apply early and hear back early. And then we have very good decision, which is just a little bit later on in the year um, and you just hear back later. But with early action and regular decision, you have until May 1st to let us know if you wanna come or not. You can see our middle 50% ranges up on that slide. 25% um, of students have below that and 25% of students have above that. We are a test optional school as well. Um, we've been test optional for many, many years now, but this year we've taken things a little bit differently and we used to have a minimum GPA that you had to have in order to apply test optional. Now there is no minimum GPA for that um, because we understand with COVID, things have kind of switched things up and some of your testing sites have been canceled and it's become really stressful to really figure out, okay, can I sign up for this or what's going on? Um, so we wanted to help ease that burden for you. So there is no minimum GPA requirement, but if you have taken the SAT or ACT, we still highly encourage you to submit that because it can help strengthen your application. Um, and then I would also recommend coming in and interviewing with us. You can do that virtually or you can come to campus and do an interview. Um, and then we also offer personal campus tours as well. So it's you and your immediate family going around on campus with one of our student ambassadors that we have here on campus with us. Um, but the interview is a really great time to just come on in and have a chit chat with us. We really like to keep it more of a casual conversation with you. And it's your chance to maybe elaborate on something with your application or maybe something's been going on in your life that you really want to talk to us about. Um, but you can also come in and ask us questions that you might have about Christopher Newport. It allows us to have kind of that free flowing conversation back and forth and for you to figure out is Christopher Newport the right school for me? Um, am I the right student to be going to Christopher Newport? Those types of things. The interview doesn't hurt you at all. It just helps add a little bit of something to your application. As far as academic merit-based scholarships are concerned, we do offer two to all of our incoming freshmen. We have our President's Leadership Program as well as our Honors Program. Both are excellent programs to be a part of. Um, with both of them, you get a scholarship, you get a study abroad stipend, as well as credit choosing of classes and housing. With leadership, you're getting a leadership studies minor and you're doing community service. With the honors program, it's gonna focus more so on the academic realm of everything and you get out of about two thirds of our liberal learning curriculum. Um, so definitely a really big benefit there if you're interested in double majoring in something along those lines. But I highly recommend coming to visit and you can do that by going to cnu.edu slash visit. Um, we are a public liberal arts and science university. I'm just one of the Virginia representatives here on campus. Um, so you can also go to cnu.edu and find out who your exact um, admission officer would be. But thanks so much for joining us today. Kim, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And want to remind everyone, if you have questions, use the Q&A button and ask the question of any of our presenters. And if it's specific to a school, please name the school in your question. We have a couple more presentations left in this session. Let's hear next from Hampton Sydney College. There we go, in business now. My name is Connor Rund. I'm Associate Dean of Admissions at Hampton Sydney College and the regional representative in Georgia. Um, but uh, excited to talk to you about Hampton Sydney. Um, honestly, there is 250 years nearly of history uh, that I'd love to talk about right now, but obviously can't get to that in six minutes. So I encourage you all to check out our website, hsc.edu. Um, Hampton Sydney is a really unique place. Uh, we were founded with the mission statement of forming good men and good citizens in uh, 1775. And so we're the 10th oldest college in the country and uh, oldest private charter in the South and actually one of the few um, remaining schools that uh, specializes in the education of men. And so I think we're really able to be tailored and streamlined and really lean into what guys are into and how they learn best. And uh, the academics are very rigorous, no doubt about it. But, uh, you know, we really think that what you know is important, but who you know is really how you can land a job. So I want to introduce you to a few guys who are in that Hampton Sydney network, uh, like this guy, Kirk Zambetti. He was a history major at Hampton Sydney, and he now runs Yeti Coolers. Y'all may have heard of them. Uh, this guy, Ronald Johnson, uh, he runs the global basketball operation for Converse, uh, recently switched from Under Armour. Um, so he's uh, really an up-and-comer in the, in the basketball industry. 
Um, he took advantage of our uh, graduate school program with Wake Forest, so uh, really maximized his experience. Uh, this guy, Rob Citrone, um, he is a billionaire with a capital B hedge fund manager who uh, got the opportunity to buy his favorite football team, the Steelers. Um, this guy, Lane Ford, uh, he actually might be uh, impacting you right now as he is creative director of Apple. Um, again, a liberal arts, uh, you know, from a small college in Virginia, creative director at Apple. Um, Warren Thompson, he owns Thompson Hospitality, which is one of the largest minority owned businesses in the country. Uh, or this guy, Jared Ficklin, he's a feature producer at the Golf Channel, English major at Hampton, Sydney. And basically it all uh, culminates in the number two alumni network in the country. And so regardless of where you want to go or what you want to do, Hampton, Sydney is the type of place that uh, we will give you the connections and the skills to, to, to reach those uh, aspirations. And uh, we do that in a number of ways. As I mentioned, you know, we're able to really lean into how guys learn best. And we find that experiential learning is something that our guys are really into. So we have classes and internships, research programs that uh, really, really, uh, you know, take, take things outside of just the classroom and uh, get you, uh, you know, with that experience. Um, we also have a really strong rhetoric program. And so basically what that is, is it equips you with the ability to communicate effectively through the written word and the spoken word and really the logic that goes into communication. So being an effective communicator is very important for life after college. Um, as far as on campus, uh, athletics are definitely an important part of who we are and what we do. Um, most of our students uh, participate in some level, whether it's on the D3 level or clubs or intramurals. Um, but honestly, a big part of it is, uh, is, is just watching the Tigers play. Uh, we actually have the highest attendance in Division Three football, a uh, very vibrant tailgate uh, game day experience. So uh, really any sport is, is very well attended and well supported at Hampton Sydney College. Um, we're also a big school for outdoorsmen. Uh, a lot of opportunities there. Our campus is uh, 1,300 acres. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of room to roam, several ponds on campus, places to fish. A lot of our guys like to hunt, like to, like to hike, kayak, you name it, anything outdoors. Uh, Hampton Sydney is the place for it. And really, I think it all kind of culminates in uh, a very strong brotherhood. Um, you know, that's a real buzzword on campus is, is the word brotherhood. And, and truly, it's the kind of place that uh, you're going to make the best friends that you've ever had in your life. Um, you know, the kind of friendships that uh, really go beyond just the four years on campus. And, um, you know, I like to say that uh, it's really an iron sharpens iron type of uh, environment at Hampton Sydney. And uh, the kind of friendships that we make uh, are, are special, are really hard to come by. And so that might be, you know, manifest in your freshman dorm, you know, doing some type of community service or uh, on the day that you graduate from Hampton, Sydney. I mean, and, and, and years throughout, I mean, Hampton, Sydney is truly a, a rest of your life type of experience. And uh, it's, a, it's a fun place to be, but it's almost even more fun to be from Hampton, Sydney College. And uh, just because we're a men's college uh, doesn't mean that uh, it's just the boys. We, uh, we have a great reputation for being gentlemen. And, and so uh, we, we host guests from, from far and wide, you know, both Virginia colleges as well as uh, colleges all over the region. Um, I actually met my wife at Hampton, Sydney, and she went to University of Georgia. So you literally meet, meet people from, from far and wide. Um, so it's a very vibrant college experience. I mean, first and foremost, you get a great education, uh, but I think even more importantly, uh, you know, having a good time, but, but really becoming the best version of yourself. And so Hampton Sydney is the kind of place that uh, I think really pulls out the potential that our guys have and, and, and really harnesses, uh, harnesses that in them. So I encourage you to apply, um, very streamlined application process. Uh, most importantly, visit campus. I mean, I'm not gonna be able to do it justice no matter what I say in six minutes. So I encourage you to come see uh, one of the most distinct and historic colleges in the country and uh, watch our video tour on YouTube. I mean, that's really the, the best way to, to kind of dive in, uh, but you know, very hospitable place. So, so we wanna help you out as best we can. Uh, that is not my contact information, but that's my colleague who uh, works in Virginia. Uh, so give him a shout if we can ever help in any way, but I uh, really appreciate y'all taking the time to kind of dive in on some colleges and uh, go Tigers. Thank you very much. I'll leave that up there for a couple seconds as I uh, remind people to use the Q&A button to ask questions of any of our presenters. And if it's specific to one school, name that in your question. One presentation left in this session, and that is from Lincoln Memorial University. 
Hello, my name is Rachel Schott, and I am excited to give you the chance here to tell you a little bit about LMU. I have not one, but two degrees from LMU myself. So um, let's go to the next slide. Well, my goodness, technology. Okay, this is a picture of our historic main campus. We are in East Tennessee, right at the border of Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. We're about an hour north of Knoxville, Tennessee. And as you can see, we have the beautiful Cumberland Mountain Range in our backyard. And the entrance to the Cumberland Gap National Historic Park is within walking distance of the front door. So um, the good news is, while we have an excellent view of the mountains, our elevation is actually relatively low, so we don't get the major snow events that happen in the higher regions. This is another view of our 1,000 acre campus. So in the foreground, you see our DeBus College of Osteopathic Medicine with the village. Those are our apartment style residence halls behind it. From this vantage point, you can also see our state-of-the-art math and science building, the roof of our 5,000 seat basketball arena, and our brand new veterinary health science building over on the left. So LMU is a private liberal arts school. We've been here since 1897. And as a private school, we do not charge out-of-state tuition. So after Tennessee and Kentucky, Virginia students make up the largest portion of our student body. We have around 5,000 students. Now 3,000 of those are in one of our graduate programs. So they may be finishing up a degree in medicine or veterinary medicine, law, or one of our other graduate programs. And 2,000 of our 5,000 students are like you, looking to complete a two-year associate's or four years bachelor's degree. As you all can see, uh, our incoming students average about a 23 ACT, 1140 on the SAT. So you may wonder how a school named after Abraham Lincoln ended up in Tennessee. Well, we have the Cumberland Mountains to thank for that. The site of our main campus is directly under a V-shaped notch that the mountains know as a Cumberland Gap. And the people of our community supported the Union Army as they passed back and forth from the other states through that gap. Lincoln commented that he wished he could do something to thank and help the people here uh, for their support. So after the war, General Howard here in this picture, he came back to Cumberland Gap and founded Lincoln Memorial University as a living memorial to the president. So though we have lots of religious organizations on campus, LMU is a non-religious private school and we've never received money from one particular faith or denomination. LMU offers more than 30 bachelor's degrees. Our most popular are nursing, pre-health biology, vet science, exercise science, criminology. We also have six different uh, two-year degrees as well. These are some of our residence living options. We have our inexpensive traditional two-person um, rooms. We also have apartment style residence halls that come furnished with a washer and dryer and kitchen. And they're a little more expensive than the traditional uh, rooms, but some people enjoy that communal environment. We are super proud of our sports teams at LMU. Uh, Lincoln himself was known for his athletic ability, not on the basketball court, but in the fields where he grew up. In fact, he could turn an entire tree into rails for a fence faster than anybody. So his nickname was Lincoln the Rail Splitter, and that's our nickname too. We are a division two school in the South Atlantic Conference. We have 23 competitive sports teams that range from basketball to lacrosse to men's and women's volleyball, even men and women's wrestling. And our athletes are students first. So while we hold 13 SAC regular season crowns, our athletes regularly receive ADA academic achievement awards. So like many schools, we have lots of recreational opportunities. My favorite is the swimming pool, not to do laps, but we also have movie night at the pool where you can sit on a floaty and watch a fun movie with your friends. So. That's my idea of physical exercise there. And it's founding LMU as a work college. So even some of our buildings here on campus were built by the students themselves. And community service is still a really important part of what we do here. So all students have a manageable community service requirement if they receive financial aid from the college. Good news is the Knoxville, Gatlinburg, Smoky Mountain community are really welcoming to our students. It gives them a variety of opportunities um, for community service and internships as well. So as I mentioned before, we're really excited about our post-bachelor's options that are waiting for students when they graduate. We have osteopathic medicine. Our Duncan School of Law has a number one bar rate for all schools in Tennessee. And our Doctor of Veterinary Medicine students have a 1,850 square foot facility just over the border at a place that we call the farm in Virginia. We also have a host of uh, nursing programs as well. 
Um, I forgot to mention too that almost 60% of our students over at LMU are undergraduate students in their first generation. So you'll have lots of ease opportunities, easy opportunities rather to get to know the application. We also have a really active chat that's right on our front page. So go ahead and uh, join that live chat on the web. It's answered by us, real human beings, and it's a great way to get help anytime that you need it. So you are welcome to sign up for a safe, socially distanced visit to the campus, but we also have a really cool virtual campus visit that's linked at the bottom of the web page. And we really have enjoyed jumping on Facebook Live with students just to take a stroll around campus. So whatever you're comfortable with, we're willing to do. Again, our website is lmunet.edu. Uh, my name is Rachel. This is my email address and my cell phone. So please call or text anytime if you have questions. Thank you. Rachel, thank you very much. And I wanna thank all of our presenters today from each of our schools. We have about uh, four and a half minutes left. So I'd like to invite each of the school representatives to jump back on video and audio right now. And I'm going to, um, I'll ask a question that we, that you can each answer kind of round robin, if you will. We'll go in the order of the presentation. So we'd go Piedmont, American University, Eastern Mennonite, Christopher Newport, Hampton, Sydney, and Lincoln Memorial. But I think the first question I'll ask, and again, this is just general question about campus life, that sort of things. Uh, again, this session's being recorded, so people uh, besides who's attending now get these answers. But uh, I think uh, the question is, what is your general campus vibe? I know some of you touched on it in your presentations, but you want to take maybe 20, 30 seconds and expand on it each school. And we'll start with Piedmont. Our general campus vibe is our students are very involved. They probably um, err on the side of too involved other than not involved. So we do a lot of time management workshops their freshman year. Um, but so it's a very active bustling campus and um, but very studious. Our athletic GPA never dropped below a 3.0 in the last 20 years. So um, yeah, but just a very bustling campus. Hi, so uh, at American University, you're going to get the vibe with students that are motivated, um, that are very involved in things on and off campus. And we really want to make sure that the students are able to not only have that experience of being on a college campus, like in a residential neighborhood and everything, we want them to go into DC and get involved and, you know, take part in things like community service and whatnot, but also things happening in their community. As you know, American University is uh, largely politically motivated, like the student body. Uh, that's just a lot, what a lot of students are invested in. So you're going to see them taking part in things like that, but also things that aren't uh, politically motivated or related to that as well. Sure. And with EMU, um, the campus vibe on, at EMU is very laid back, very community based. Again, all of our students and professors are completely on a first name basis. So this kind of breaks down the barrier between like um, professors and students and kind of making sure everyone feels comfortable asking questions and going into office hours um, during the day. And then our student life has an extremely um, very active community. We have events, a lot of community service work and um, in addition to like campus gardens and a chicken coop that students can um, be a part of. So I would definitely say it's very laid back and uh, very community based. Say Chris Freeport. Um, our president likes to say that we are not a school for spectators. Um, so you definitely want to get involved. That doesn't mean you have to get involved in everything under the sun, but just find that one thing that you're passionate about. Um, we're really big on community service on campus. Uh, we have service distinction students who are graduating um, with over 100 hours of community service with them. Um, and then I would say that it's a really open and community based kind of a campus to where we are celebrating people's differences and we want students to come here and learn from each other and learn a different perspective, learn about a different culture, those types of things. So we want to embrace all those differences. I think Hampton Sydney is obviously a very unique environment, uh, you know, a thousand dudes on 1300 acres, but I found that it was a really balanced kind of right thing at the right time. Um, you know, when it's time to kind of buckle down and get your work done, that's what we're up to. When it's time to have a good time, that's what we're up to. And, uh, you know, you'll be walking around campus and see one dude wearing a blazer and then see somebody else wearing, you know, decked out in camo because he just came out of a duck blind. Um, so it's a, you know, kind of a interesting place to find your niche for sure. But uh, 
definitely for the boys. And I'm glad you mentioned your president, Kim. Uh, he actually went to Hampton, Sydney. Uh, so got to give a shout out to, to old Paul Tribble. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, Hampton, Sydney's for the boys for sure. It sounds like some of the guys from Hampton, Sydney would be comfortable here at Lincoln Memorial University as well. Um, we do have a lot of hunting and camping and fishing and those kinds of things going on too. Um, we have a strong first year experience program. So our first year students have their own little posse that they move around campus with. So you see them in small little herds around campus. Um, we also have tons of animals because of our vet school and our pre-vet program. There are aminals everywhere and we absolutely love that. There's also a lot of coffee and a lot of white coats with all the graduate students we have here. I like to say, if you wanna find a party, you probably can, but the coffee shops are much busier than the uh, other libaceous uh, places on campus. <laughs> Thank you all for sharing that and that information and obviously your presentations as well, but uh, learning more about each of your campuses was fun and really helpful, I'm sure, for everyone who will watch this, who watched today and will watch later. I want to thank everyone for joining us, our presenters and our attendees this afternoon. When you close your window, you'll get a link to a very quick four question survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. This is just one of many sessions being hosted. Be sure to sign up for additional ones, drivescan.com slash Virginia. And at the same website, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings. They'll be available in about a week. Again, drivescan.com slash Virginia. Once again, thank you to our presenters today and have a great rest of your afternoon slash evening. Take care. <laughs>